Noah, what is going on guys? It's your boy Sessa here with a video here today. Bring us a brand new video having a very own cool super dope text effects. So I gave you guys three different text effects using Photoshop and Illustrator and I just gave them all like all the new trends and such to your attention. Um, the last time we did a typography video, we just have like over here, if you guys wanna go ahead and check it out. Um, you guys ate it up, you guys enjoyed it and you guys like, this is freaking dope. I can do these a lot. Like you guys let me know. If you want like a cool episodic version of like this sort of series where I do all the new trends and stuff like that that comes to like mind and just let me know. If you guys also see or know of any other cool text effects and you have the name of them, comment down below. People are gonna be looking at them. You guys can look at it, Google it, look at all the forms and stuff like that, and uh, just bring it to my attention as well. But with that being said, hope you guys do enjoy seeing the video here today. And uh, yeah, that's it. Go ahead and check out the other video as well. I love you guys. Just let me know. Peace. Let's do it. All right, guys, the first text effect makes use of two really awesome fonts that you might have. You can set up your text with a really cool complex feeling by weaving or even placing more text around it. So in my case, I used the word text for my cool sans serif font, and then I purposely wrote the word effect with a really cool brush right on top of it. This, of course, can be exchanged for like another cool decorative font that you might have found yourself. However, then I made a selection of my word text, which is the sans serif font that I have, by holding control and selecting the thumbnail of the actual text layer. But making sure you click right back on your decorative font layer, in my case, of course, my handwritten font, and then either using a layer mask or an eraser tool, erase one letter at a time by creating a cool little pattern like erase one, skip one, erase one, skip one, to allow the actual decorative font to feel like it's weaving through the actual serif letters. Of course, if you had another font, however, and it wasn't already a rasterized layer, in my case, since I wrote on it myself on a new layer, you'd have to either rasterize your text layer or make it a smart object. Then use the layer mask so you erase with a black brush and you can fill it right back in with a white brush. It's super easy to do. Let's say, however, you wanted a cool sans serif font again as your base, but another clean kind of serif font with a little bit of a theme built into it. For me, I chose the Gang of Three font, which is a super popular font. I feel like everyone knows about it. Then take a duplicate of the decorative font and use the actual transform tool to make it a little bit bigger. Afterwards, you just want to lower your fill option, which is right below the opacity, to 0%. Then going into the layer style options and choosing the stroke path, which I put mine at around 2 to 3 points. Then following the same exact concept as before, this time I'll smart object my current stroke text layer, and then I'll make sure I have a layer mask on that layer as well. Also being sure you have your base text selected. Then I'll just erase the cool pattern once again, skipping a few letters in between. So now that way you have a cool small touch of detail with the stroke layer itself, feeling it's weaving through some of the letters in the background of your text. By the way, I think a really good neutral color like whites, blacks, and grays should be the choice of color you use for your actual stroke. But yeah, guys, that is basically it. You can basically use this style to build a cool theme solely around the font choices that you actually use. Something I think a lot of you guys can actually have a lot of fun with. Next up, homies, is a really awesome shape text effect that uses really cool shape text effects, mainly done in Illustrator, that you can use in a lot of merge concepts or as like really cool filler projects for text or even textures. Some of you actually probably learned this technique in school for sure, but let me just refresh your mind a little bit. Let's say you want to have the word effect inside a circle. All you'd end up doing is setting up a circle with the L shortcut key on your keyboard for shapes while holding Alt and Shift as you actually make the circle. Then guys, with the direct selection tool, you guys want to both select the circle and the text and use the align tools, which if you cannot find them, they're under Windows Align and align the grouping by clicking align middle first and then center. Then right click on the shape and use the word arrange. Then select the option bring to front. And then you guys want to select both the shape and the text once again and click on the object on the top and make sure you guys go to envelope distort and then choose the option make with top shape. And it's honestly just that easy. You can pretty much do this with any shape that you guys ever wish, whether it's for a diamond, a circle, a square. It's just a super cool thing to actually end up doing. However, if you want to put more than one word inside, you pretty much end up doing the same exact steps, but you want to make sure you actually split the actual circle into different sections of the shape. So if we were going to end up doing this, once again, we're going to use this circle as an example, and you guys want to make sure you, of course, make your circle, then using the pen tool, which using P on your keyboard for the shortcut, to actually go ahead and bring out the pen tool, splitting the shape in half with the actual path itself. Whether that's with a curved line or a straight line, it's up to you, basically. Keeping in mind, guys, you want to have your fill turned off with the actual red slash going through it and your stroke is actually on. Then, under your stroke table, found under Windows Stroke, if you guys want to have it up already, put your stroke up, wait a few points or so. I put mine about 20. I thought it was good enough. However, guys, understand that the actual size of the stroke that you guys put is the size and the distance between the actual two words that'll be inside your shape. Then, guys, after your path is now going right through your actual shape, however, which way you ended up doing so, you guys want to go to Object, Expand, and when the table pops up, you want to have your fill and your stroke both selected, and then press OK. 
Now guys, you want to make sure you have both now your shape and your new shape that you just made with your path both selected. Then you want to use the shape builder tool, which is the quick shortcut shift M. While holding Alt on your keyboard, it would actually delete all the shapes that are interacting or intersecting with each other. So this is basically when to hold Alt and click on the actual middle path line that is basically splitting your actual shape in half. Then once you guys are good with that, it follows the same idea as before by taking your text and aligning it with one half of the shape. This time though, guys, I wouldn't use a line this time. I would just have you do it manually. Followed by that, guys, and make sure again, you right click on the actual shape, select the range and bring to top. Then select the new top half of your shape and the text itself. And same as before, you want to go to object, envelope and make with top shape. It's honestly as simple as that, guys. You can make a really cool, awesome filler text or even have it as a cool starting base to a really cool text effect that you use in a project for the future. Who the heck knows? And for a really quick way to actually use as an example, if you ever have any trouble with backings and backgrounds and figuring out what you can do with them, if you have no idea what to do, use this actual cool effect and put it as a background, whether if you do like a cool pattern with it or even just make it really, really big and change the color and or the blend modes or the opacity um, and just use it as that. I think it's a really simple and clean way to do it. And uh, I can see myself doing it a few times, to be honest. All right, guys, and for the last text effect for the video, but it's this really cool, awesome, ghostly Aurora effect. One of the ways you guys end up doing it yourselves is simply just writing out the word with the font of your choice. After making sure it's all spelled right and it's the size that you guys would like, you guys wanna make sure you right click on the actual text layer and convert it into a smart object. Then use free transform, so control T to bring out free transform, then right click on the actual text and choose perspective. By taking either bottom corner, you just wanna move it towards the outside to get this really awesome perspective. Afterwards, guys, you want to press enter or a little check button to actually place it. And you guys want to make sure you guys duplicate your text layer with control J. Then control T to free transform once again and right click flip vertical. And be sure guys to place the actual duplicate on the same endpoints of the original text. So that means align the actual top and the actual bottom as well. Following that, open free transform once again and choose distort. Then selecting the middle anchor point, drag your mouse down in order to stretch the text. Keep in mind guys that at all times you want to make sure that's of course hitting the top and the bottom of your text always, okay? Just so you guys know. After you want to use free transform once again and use distort once again and uh, take the left and right bottom anchors and just push them inward. That way you get more of this cool water falling effect and it almost looks like it's going from bigger to the top and then smaller at the bottom. Then after you guys are good distorting your text, you guys want to use motion blur under filter blur motion blur and align your motion blur angle at 90 degrees and bump up your distance to about 70 or 80. Now make a duplicate of your blurry text and open up your layer styles and turn off the red box in the middle. Keeping in mind guys, the original font color that I chose was white. So if you guys are also using white, this will basically give you the same exact effect, which is going to basically give you a cool little blurry blue tone to it as well. Then combine all your layers into one by holding shift and selecting on the first top layer and then selecting the bottom layer and merge them all together with control E. Then to add the swirl effect, simply use the smudge tool and be sure to blend together the actual text into the blurry text and honestly just go wild with actually curving your mouse every now and again or so or just kind of going swiggly lines and it gives you a really dope effect. You guys can always add more color with a layer by clicking mask a layer to the actual text itself and adding any color that you guys would like. I like to make a duplicate with the new text with all the new colors and then use the blend mode pin light and then just use another smudge tool effect to add a really cool ghost in the actual text. Add a little bit of color correction you guys got yourself a super awesome abstract layer style that you guys can use on pretty much anything that you guys see fit. It's super freaking dope and it's one of those things that's just kind of like easy to know and easy to do so why not give it a shot. All right, guys, it's the end of the video here today. So if you guys, of course, as always, leave a like on the video if you guys did enjoy. Comment down, like I said before, maybe any cool text effects that uh, you ended up doing and just let me know. Let me know them down below that I have no idea of yet and maybe we can just like have that moment together. And uh, if you guys are new, bro, and you haven't subscribed yet, please go to do so. And uh, that's all. I just want to say just I love you guys very much and I'll talk to you guys later. Sizzle HQ out. You're going to keep smiling. Stay positive and stay freaking productive, guys. Later. Much love. Enjoy your day. Peace.